Today, we're going to be taking a look at what is inside this envelope. And this is said to be one of the best design frames on the market from a vibration point of view. It is designed by the man we all know and love as Chris Rosser, and it is the AOS 7. In today's video, we're going to take a look at this frame. I'm going to put it together and give you some thoughts. Now, the idea of this frame for me is going to be part of a new 7-inch build that I intend to do with the upcoming 1 Watt VTX from HD0. If you're interested in seeing that when that actually releases, as well as more videos on this frame as I progress through the build, please do consider hitting the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. Further to that, if you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep making content like this, because I did buy this frame. I didn't tell Chris I was ordering it. I ordered it from Canada and it shipped over very, very quickly indeed. And if you'd like to allow us to keep being able to do stuff like that, please do check out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee too. Anyway, let's get on with it. Let's take a look at what this is all about. We'll put it together and then I'll give you some early thoughts. Okay, so as I said, I ordered this over myself from Canada. It came really, really quickly. When I ordered the frame, it was actually out of stock. And I ordered it from CSC Drones or CNC Madness. And they shipped it within about a week of me actually placing the order. And it arrived today. And it was a bit of a surprise, actually, that it arrived just before Christmas. And that is the point it is when I'm making this video. Now... As I've said, I've bought this as to do a nice new 7-inch build. The plan is to do it with the 6S, and it's going to be a build I want to do with this new VTX from HD0. I have seen some footage on these frames on Chris Ross's site, as well as on his YouTube channel, and he does talk about the interesting design and build of it, and we'll take a look at this a bit more as I go through as well. Now, as you can see, when we've got it, it's just come in this nice sealed bags. And we get a nice little battery strap as well, which we don't need for a second. If we open it up, now I ordered this with the blue standoffs. And I'm trying to remember what other options I ordered this with as well, because there were a few more options available too. You can see it says made in Canada on the little thing that comes in it, which is very, very cool. So hello, Canada, wherever you are out there. We've got our little build and screw pack with the standoffs for the frame. We've got the camera mounts as well as the little mounts at the front. We've got our arms and our plates. Now, this is quite a large frame, as you can see, because it is a seven inch model. Um, and it, it's got very much all of the design cues that Chris has taken from his AOS 5 series of frames, and they've moved that forward into the AOS 7. And Chris has spent a lot of time, as I understand it, putting effort into designing a frame that has the rigidity in the right places to minimize vibrations in your build overall. And Chris actually has a build series on all of his frames with recommended components. And whilst I'm not going to be following that strictly, I am looking forward to seeing how this flies compared to some bigger frames that I've had in the past. As you can see, you'll also notice that there looks like there are a lot of arms. And the reason for that is, Everything on this, on the arms, is actually two pieces. So they're not actually a single piece arm set. They're a two piece arm set that you put together. And you'll also notice just how thick these are. I have got my vernier here. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but if I put the vernier on it, these are eight mil thick arms on the main arms themselves. We've got the top plate, which is... 2.5 mil thick from the looks of it. The bottom plate looks very similar, 2.5 mil thick again. And then we've got that auxiliary bottom plate which goes over the top of things, 2.43, so basically 2.5. Now, I did watch one of Chris's videos on this and the reason the arms on this frame are actually in two halves is very clever. And the idea is, is to keep the weave of the carbon fiber going the same way on the arms to give it the most strength. So what I mean by that is if we take one of those arms and they do actually interlock together and we take one of them and we've got our two arm sections here. Now these 
actually end up locking together, as I understand it, like that, to actually make the main arm itself. And then you have one of these plates that goes on the arm to actually help hold it together with the screws going through into the motor mount like that. That gives it its strength. But the idea is when you have it like this, you've got the weave of the carbon fiber going that way and the weave of the carbon fiber going that way. So no part of the arm strength in this is actually compromised. The strength in this section remains the same on both arms. If you were using a single arm design piece, what you'd end up with, you'd have to choose either that one to have the carbon fiber weave where this one would be off, or that one to have it with this one off. So it is an interesting design in that sense, how it goes together. But you have this interlocking arm assembly, and then what you then do is have the motor bolts go through this plate into the motors themselves, and that locks that together tightly, and the strength for that is all in that joint there. So it is a very interesting design and quite different to anything else that we see out there. And again, we simply choose our matching pieces to lock them together. So that's another one, that's one, that's two. And what we choose is one with a round base and one with a square base. Four, three, and then we've got our fourth one there as well. As I've said, I have already had a look at how this frame goes together, and it appears fairly straightforward from what I can see. Um, I believe that is the top plate, and that is the bottom plate, and the arms actually go on the bottom of the plates. So, for instance, my understanding is they go like that, if I have this correct. In fact, let me move this just to show you it properly. So if I put that there, we have the round pieces at the back. So that arm goes there like that. This arm would go there like that. We then have this arm, again, I believe like that. And then the fourth one, like that. And then from the assembly point of view, this plate goes over the base. So that would then be over that section there. And then there are two plates, one for the back here and another one for the back down here at the front. Or actually, that, that's the front, that's the back, like that. And that then is the main base plate of the aircraft put together. And the arms don't come into the main section of the build. They actually go into underneath the frame and once this is all screwed up tight, this is what gives it its strength and rigidity. We then have our four plates for the motors, which we won't be using today. And then we've got our two plates for our camera mount at the front, which we'll take a look at once we get the other bits spun over. So what I'm gonna do now is get the assembly done on this frame and we'll come back once I've got this all screwed in place. Okay, so as you can see, we've just got the back side of the frame together there. So what I've done is just put the four standoffs on with the frame bolted together just like that. I think that is correct right now. I need to just go and have a double check um, that these aren't meant to be back further and this down there. I don't believe that's the case. It all looks correct. The only thing I have just spotted is that when you put the bottom plate on, you will cover the mounting holes for your autopilot. So you want to put your bolts through here before putting this middle plate on 
Otherwise, you're going to have to take it back off again when you get to that stage. So when you do assemble it, you want to get your mounting pattern in place. We've got 30 by 30 or 20 by 20. I'm going to be going for 30 by 30. So I'm going to just pop that back off and get some bolts through on that one. Okay, so I've got the frame together. You can see we've got all the standoffs on as well. The only extra two you have to add are the two at the front. They're not part of the leg system, which holds it in place. They simply go on to the front end of the frame. I've got my 30 by 30 mounting pattern bolts in as well. As I've said, you want to get them in early because there's no easy way to get to them once the bottom plate's on. But we also then have our other 30 by 30, 30 by 30 mounting or 20 by 20, 20 by 20 or even 20 by 20 there. If you want them, you'd have to drill them out, but they can be done as well. Now, the last things to put on the frame is the camera holders at the front and then the top would go on. Now, you have these pre-cut plates which are designed for not only the DJI cameras with the two areas as well, Chris says, but also standard FPV cameras too. These slot in to the frame here and here from the looks of it. And then we have the top section of the frame that then clips into these. We can then screw the top of the frame in place. So I'm going to put a bunch of screws in now to hold it and see what the rigidity feels like. Although we won't be feeling things properly because of the fact the motors aren't actually on. But let's put it together. So the build is together, it's all done. Overall, it feels very nice and solid. Obviously without the motors on, it's still not 100% yet, but it is certainly a beefy frame to say the least. Now, the nice thing with this is it gives us multiple options on the VTX because we can mount the VTX at the front being nice and close to the camera because there's loads of space between the stack and the front, or you can mount it at the back of the antennas. You're gonna have that compromise depending on what you're doing because you're either gonna need a long camera cable to go to the front or a long, cable coming back for the aerial if you want to hang that off the back or you could put the aerials up here in the middle but again that's going to give us issues what is for sure on this stack is that there is plenty of space in this frame depending on what you want to do with it as i've said my plan on this one is to actually use it with hd zero on that one watt vtx i need to do some measurements to see what the sort of length is and whether the long hd zero cable will be okay but there's plenty of space in this frame to do what Ever you need to do. As for the rest of the components on this, I'm going to be putting a stack in the middle, obviously, and you do need to just be careful that there is enough height. You've got 20 mil between the plates, so you do need to make sure that whatever stack you're going to choose will go in there. It shouldn't be an issue on most of them, but it is something just to take into account. Jumping over to the desktop a second, just to show you guys what I'm planning on using, and I'm looking at using the Mamba stack, which is the Mamba Basic F22 Mark III. This is a newer version of the stack that has recently released and my plan is to actually use this one on this build rather than a couple of the ones I've used before to a point because it's in stock and that's the biggest issue I'm finding right now is finding hardware that I can actually buy. A lot of the hardware I'm looking for is simply out of stock. Motor wise, it's been highly recommended to look at going with the Emacs Eco 2s, which are the 2807s, 1300 KVs, because I'm going to be running this build in 6S. So my choice of motors is going to be that one unless I find something else and then we're gonna go with the recommended props from Chris himself, which is the HQ props, the seven by 3.5 by threes. And that's what he is recommending for that build too. 
The nice thing about this frame as well, there is a load of 3D printed accessories available for it as well. If you go on Thingiverse, there is a link to this on Chris's website. So when you go on the AOS 7 site and he walks you through all of the info and the specs, you can actually request to buy the frame or you can actually jump over to the website to be able to download the 3D prints. And you've got all sorts of stuff here. We've got antenna mounts on the back. We've got GPS mounts, camera mounts. So pretty much everything you would need to get the frame up and running. As I said, I ordered this directly from the website and that is from the, I think it's cncdrones.com. It is, that's where I ordered it myself. I got it over to the UK. So we went with the, I think I went with the 20 mil camera spacing. Let me just actually check that. I don't actually remember what I chose on that. I think it was 20. No, I went with 19 for DJI. Let's hope that's not a problem. Um, and I went for the countersunk screws when I ordered mine. And then I went for the blue standoffs, as you've seen already. And that shipped over from $96 over to the UK. There was postage on top of that. And I'll be honest, it was really, really fast. Really fast. I can't remember the day I placed the order, but it was like a week and a bit ago. So I'm really impressed how quickly that came over. So if you are interested in getting yourself one, you can go over to here. Chris does have a number of flame, frames, flames, frames. He has a number of flames and he has a number of frames as well. Um, he has the AOS 5, which is said to be extremely good. I haven't tried it myself yet. I'm, it's one of the frames I want to get my hands on. For me, I was more interested in doing a larger build right now with the six, uh, seven inch rather than go for another five. So we'll get this out the way and then we'll probably get one of them in. And I've actually got a stack here, the Speedy B stack I can probably put into the five inch. Um, I'll get away with that with the 35 amp BSC, no problem at all. Um, but he does have his whole range of frames, the five, the 5.5, even the 3.5 I could be tempted to do the 3.5 actually that that could be one I'm tempted to do um but we've got the the uh the seven which we've gone for today so if you are interested in it check out the link on the website okay that's it all done um in the next video I'll do a build video on this as we're working through it as I'm doing the other build as well which is the FPV drone the one sort of equivalent to the DJI which I've, I've got to carry on with because I sort of stopped for a couple of reasons, component issues, um, but we're going to be getting back on that one. But this one I intend to build up fairly quickly, to be honest, because I want to get this up and running ready for that one watt VTX. So I'm going to get the order in. I'm probably do that today and I might get the motors and stuff before Christmas. That way we can get the building progress over the new year as well. As I said, if you're interested in one, check out Chris's website. If you've liked this video and you'd like to see more like this, as I said, if you're not subscribing, please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell. Also, if you want to support us, please do check out Patreon as well as buy me a coffee and check out my Discord server. Come over, say hello, and if you've got any questions, post them in there and I'll try and answer them as soon as I possibly can.